Hey guys, welcome to my channel, my name is Hayden. In this video, I'll talk about how you can take a software engineering project from initial idea all the way through to release, specifically building a website. In my career, I've been involved in developing and designing countless projects, from trading systems all the way through to small side projects. We'll go through all stages, that is coming up with an idea, designing how it should look, planning out all the work, reviewing what we're going to do and working out if it's achievable. If you're starting a software engine project, let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to my channel to make sure you're kept up to date with all the latest videos I'm pushing out for this project. I'm going to be making tutorials and walkthroughs at each stage of the project, so be sure to check them out. Let's jump into the project. Step one of starting a software engineering project is coming up with the idea, and this is definitely the hardest part of it because there's so many things you can do and you need to narrow it down to what you want to do. Now, if you can't think of something, I find the easiest way to come up with ideas for new projects is to identify things that annoy you and try to automate them. For example, you could have something that tells you when your next train for your commute is going to come in, or, or you could have something that tells you if you need to buy something when you go to the shops, you could have it generate your shopping list, or even things to say that, oh, you know, it's raining outside, so you need to take your coat today. Find things that annoy you that you can automate so it really annoys me to keep checking the train app on my phone to go, right, when's my next train coming in? So if I had a thing, if I had an app that said, right, you're close to the station now, here's a little text to say the next train to your home is going to be at this time, that would be super awesome. So for this project, I'm going to be documenting the process of building out a website for a local textiles designer. She wants a website to promote her brand and her product and her designs that she is going to be selling. So she's going to want a little portfolio. Uh, she's going to want a shop that she can buy and sell things on. She's going to want to make it look all funky. Um, so, I mean, this is for a client, but for you guys, you could also do this. You could just build a website for yourself. Uh, if you want something to learn, then, you know, build a website for yourself and, and, and give this a go. Step two is designing. So once you have your idea, you need to start designing how it should look. Now, for me, this was quite easy because the textile designer already had an idea of how she wanted her website to look so I can just copy her styles. Obviously I gave her some tips and feedback from a person that's created websites before so I can kind of say right you know you need to tweak this, users would normally expect it like this. But if that's not the case and you need to come up with a design yourself, here's a few tips. So start looking at websites you do, look like, you do like and kind of copy their designs. Look at competitors and see what they're doing. Are they displaying stuff in a, in a table, in a grid? Because that's the most e that's the easiest way to present information. This is a learning project and you're just building something to see if you can achieve a design. Then just, just pick that design and just try and copy it and see how close you can get to it. A big tip when you are designing is definitely write stuff down on paper with a pen. Um, because the amount of times I have thought something looks really really good in my head and then gone to put it on a piece of paper and it just looks horrific or doesn't suit that sort of place and it needs to be somewhere else is is countless also when you are drawing them down on bits of paper you do go oh yeah you know this should be more on the left that should be more on the right that doesn't really fit there oh i forgot that i need to include you know a, a linkedin button here or the logo goes at the top there things like that you start to kind of materialize and finalize the design a lot more um, so I'd really, really recommend drawing stuff down on pieces of paper. Really keep prototyping and just drawing stuff out and seeing how it goes and eventually you'll get something that, that works. I'm a bit of a perfectionist so I never really get that happy with my final design but I wouldn't really worry because there's a step later in this video where I talk about kind of reviewing as we constantly go and that's something that we can address at that point. So just get a rough idea of what you think it should look like and how it should behave and then as the project evolves this will all just fit into place naturally. Step three of a software engineering project is defining the tasks. So once you've got the finalized design you need to break all that down into chunks of work. Now I would fully recommend here do not think about the end goal of what you want your idea or your app or your website to look like. I would just think about the next steps. The amount of times I've gone to start a project and thought it will do all this, we can do all that and we can do all this and then thought about the end goal and then because it seems so far away and so hard to achieve I just almost become demotivated and, and don't want to do it and then the project just stops there. So what you do want to do is just think about right what's my next step? My next step might be just create the home page. The, the step after that is just create the contact me page and just build it up in these these little iterations and after a while you find that one step at a time you you get towards your final goal. So projects can always be broken down into smaller tasks. So 
like I said, don't look at the whole thing. What you can do, so for example, if you're building a website, what you can do is break them down into pages. So you have the home page, the contact me page, the portfolio page, the shop page. Inside all those pages, they have components and elements that you can break them down even narrower into. So for example, you'll have a logo, you'll have a search bar, you'll have a navigation bar. Each little component in itself is a task that you can do. Can I build the search bar? Tomorrow I'll build the logo. The day after that I'll build this. Having these smaller chunks of work makes it really easy because you can start building up momentum because every day you can just do one little chunk of work and then eventually after a couple months or maybe a week or so you, you know you've built this entire project that you thought wow. Whereas if you thought right I'm here and the final end goal is that and you try and run towards it you just it just becomes too overwhelming and you just never get to the end. Splitting all this out into chunks of work is is a is a technique that I like to follow. The technique is called Kanban, which is where you have essentially a a, a board. It, it's originally it's from sticky notes, so you have normally like sticky notes on a wall somewhere, and you have three columns of to do, doing, and done. You write all your to do, so all these tasks: build the search bar, build the navigation uh, bar, build the home page. You put all these on sticky notes in to do and then when you're ready to pick one up you can pick one up and you put it in 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 progress or doing and then once you've done you put it into done and then it really helps clarify your mind and keep your mind clear so you can just focus on that one task at a time and also you can look back and go wow look i've done five tasks and and six tasks now and it really helps break the project down into a kind of smaller bite-sized chunks so if you'd be interested in seeing a video about how to make a kanban board and tasks for a kanban board uh, give me a shout in the comments below Step four is understanding what is achievable from your project. So my biggest tip here is remember that it's only you working on the project and not a team of people. So you really need to ask yourself once you've defined all these tasks and got it all ready to go, is what you're going to build even achievable? Like if you're going to try and build the next Amazon.com, that is not achievable on a little side project because there's teams and teams of people, hundreds and hundreds of engineers that do that. There's no way that you'd be able to do it. Or you might be able to, you might be really incredible, but there's definitely, I, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that as a side project on my own. This is where you need to kind of work out, am I taking on too much work? So like, if you've given yourself a time frame right, I want this project to be done in a week, or a weekend, or a month, or three months, you need to think, right, can I get all this done? Do I know how to do this from, you know, start to finish? Is it gonna be easy? A lot of the time you're not gonna know how to do it from start to finish, but you'll be able to learn and understand, so it's fine. So yeah, this is a good moment to go back over your tasks and start thinking, is this really needed, this task? Can I achieve it? Is this is this gold plating? Gold plating's where you know, it doesn't actually add anything to your final uh, end goal, but it makes it just kind of look or feel better. I might just be making a button look a bit cool, or having a nice transition on a website. You know, it doesn't actually add anything to the overall product, but it just makes it feel cooler and better. Definitely at this point as well, go over your tasks and think, right, how long will this one take me? How long will that one take me? If you've set yourself a weekend to do this in, is that achievable? If you set yourself a month to do that in, are all the tasks that you're gonna do able to be completed in a month? You know, these are questions you really need to ask yourself. Once you've had that kind of reality check on the project and you're good to go and you've filtered out all the tasks that you think, you know, this is just not needed, this is a bit of a time waste the task, then you can set off and you can start your project and at least you have a clearer picture in your head of what you really, really, really want out of this uh, out of this software project. Step five of a software engineering project is to constantly be reviewing what you're doing. So as your project grows and gets bigger, you're gonna be writing more and more lines of code and you need to be asking yourself, you know, is what I'm doing the kind of best way I know how to solve this problem. So lots of issues is as as projects grow and evolve, they become a lot messier. And don't get me wrong, on side projects, you know, when you're doing them after work or late at night when you have some free time, you do tend to write stuff quite quickly and, and get it done and get it working. And then a couple of weeks later, you go back to look at that same code and you think, what was I thinking? Did I even write this? Is this me? Like, it does, just doesn't make any sense. So once you've created that little feature or, or, or written that bit of code, you want to be asking yourself, you know, is this optimal? When I come and look at this in, in a couple of weeks time, will I know what's going on? It, like, don't get me wrong, a side projects, they don't need to be like fully production worthy. But for example, if you're doing it for a client like I will be, you need to make sure that, you know, you're, you're the sole responsibility of this project getting done and you don't want to confuse yourself you want to keep yourself as clear as possible this brings me back to my point i mentioned earlier in the video when i said you can constantly review so as you know you're designing and things are changing and evolving and the client is starting to see the project and you're starting to see your project and your idea kind of come to life a lot of the time people are going to change their mind about things they're going to go you know what actually i want a different picture there or i don't like the text on that word or can we move that left and right this is only natural this is only human we never get it right first time so it's fine but 
this is a mindset you need to keep yourself in of you need to be constantly reviewing what you're doing going you know is this the best of what i can give and what i can do and and, and be open to change you know things change all the time the world's a very adaptable place you know so should you be and when you're designing software it's not set in stone this is how it's going to be as the project evolves it the requirements will evolve as well You'd always be open for feedback on projects so for example in this video if you've got feedback for me please leave a comment below and um, that'll be i really appreciate that if you can do that um, and i wish you all the best with your software project so there we go we've gone from an initial idea all the way through to being ready to start a software engineering project so in the upcoming videos i will be documenting the process of building this software project so if you want to follow along make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video please like that really helps me out and i hope you have a really good day thanks everyone